Oh, there is no need to Brexit this video. Even though England is no longer in the European Union, that means we still have plenty of time for the Euro 2016 competition. And uh, you know what? I'll try to do this as quick as I can. Obviously, I love Euro football because you know it gives me an opportunity to say a lot of really insensitive remarks about uh, the native people of Europe. And of course, they're the one you know cultural you know people that you can make fun of without fear of reprimand. So there's gonna be plenty of fun coming up, I assure you. And if you don't know what's playing in the background, shame, shame on you. All right, let's do the bracket as quick as we can here. Uh, game one, Switzerland against Poland. A pretty interesting matchup. Uh, but Poland's got a better goalkeeping. I think a little bit better offense. You have to go with the Poles. As long as they don't, you know, try to, you know, go to the sun at night or put a screen door in a submarine. I'm gonna give it to the Poles. Uh, Croatia against Portugal. Another pretty interesting matchup. Uh, but I think Croatia just a little bit better offensively. Not really impressed by what Portugal's throwing out there. I'm gonna give it to the Croats. So. Uh, you know, all the great uh, Croatian nationals like Mirko Flipovic, and that's all I know about Croatia is that he's from there. So, yeah, never mind. Poland and Croatia. Uh, Wales against Northern Ireland. Not Ireland. They're actually two different countries like North Korea and South Korea. Uh, so, we got Wales against Northern Ireland. I don't think it's a little bit more competitive than it looks, but ultimately, got to go with Wales. I mean, it's a better team offensively, better team defensively, better team. As far as uniforms go, I mean, they're pretty much better in every way you can think of. Alright, Hungary taking on Belgium, definitely the most interesting uh, matchup on this side of the uh, tournament. I go back and forth because I think it could really be kind of decided by a turn toss. I think Hungary's got really good defense, but I think Belgium's offense is a bit better. So, with that in mind, just looking at what Belgium's done, they can really, you know, put on the points in bunches. I'm going to give it to them, but it's going to be very close. This may come down to a shootout. It could be like a 3-2 exciting little matchup, so stay tuned for that. All right, now all the way over here. All right, Germany against Slovakia. Well, you know, there's one thing history has taught us. is when Germans start moving uh, eastward towards the Slavic states, bad things happen. The bad thing is going to happen to Slovakia. Let's give it to uh, the Jerry's. I didn't, do anybody know that term? Do they still use that as a, a, perjur, a pejur, pejorative for uh, the Germans? I'm just throwing it out there. So yeah, good luck, Heinz. Italy and Spain, in what seems like it should be like the finals of the Euro and not like a first round matchup. Uh, I don't know, Spain is not the team they used to be. I think Italy's on the upswing. Like the hungry Belgian game, they should be very offense oriented. So I think in a firefight, gotta go with Italy. I know. Huh, Germany and Italy together. Hmm, never seen that before. All right, let's move along. France versus Ireland. You know, France is the home country. They've been playing very well. Great offense, good defense, a very well-oiled machine. Got to go with the Frost here. I think uh, they're just a very good team. they got the home advantage. Ireland really not playing that well. Probably distracted by the whole Brexit thing. Got to go with France. 2 nothing. And the most interesting matchup, I think, of the entire first round. England versus Iceland. England, they kind of have this major political distraction going on right now in their country. I don't know if you're aware of it, but they left the European Union. Iceland, they are probably the worst team left in the tournament. They barely got in. Probably the least experience. There's like 40 people who live in the capital city of Iceland. They're not expected to do great things. England is like the country that's known for inventing soccer. That may be historically accurate, may not, but still. Folks, Iceland's going to win this game. It's going to be a huge upset. It's going to be like 2-1, maybe it takes extra time. I just think, I don't know, England's going to go in there distracted. They have so much pressure on them. They always have a whole bunch of weight, considering it being the Euro. That in mind, I'm going to give Iceland the upset. So let's stick with this side of the thing. Germany against Italy. We've got Dyer Fuhrer taking on, uh, the, what do they call him? El, du El Duque? That's what they used to call Mussolini. Boy, I like to rehash World War II memes. Just, it's really great. Uh, Germany, Italy should be interesting. I think it's going to be lots of explosive firepower. Uh, maybe not the best defensive showing. Just straight out offense. And with that in mind, I'm going to give it. Got to give it to Germany. You know, they're just very well oiled. I mean, they're just, you know, the pinnacle of being a well-run organization. They're just a great national team, point blank. A little bit better than Italy at this point. Uh, France versus Iceland. 
it's been a good story, but France is arguably the best team in the entire tournament. And I think uh, Iceland's Cinderella story melts. You have to let it go, so to speak. But is Iceland really icy? Or is it, okay, no, it's Greenland is the one that's icy. Iceland's actually kind of green. For uh, that great cultural you know, beacon of hope and light and knowledge, Mighty Ducks too. So that in mind, go to France. And, oh my, Germany and France? Huh, boy, nothing but, you know, amicable feelings between these two. All right, so over here, uh, Poland taking on Croatia. Like I said, should be a really interesting matchup, but I'm going to have to go with Poland. You know, they're just playing very good defense, very solid, a whole lot more strategic than a lot of people give them credit for. It's a solid overall team. I think it's better in every category than Croatia. Probably not going to be a landslide. You know, may take extra time, but I can go with Poland. All right, Wales against Belgium. Um, well, it should be pretty close, but I think it's kind of the same thing with Poland against Croatia. I mean, Belgium, just more offensive firepower. I like their goaltending more. It's hard to go against them. Got to go with Belgium. All right, so Poland and Belgium. I'm not really sure if these two countries have a whole lot of history, or if they do, it's really not well discussed in the American school system. Uh, this one should be really, really good, because Poland, I think, is a better defensive team. Uh, Belgium is way better offensively. So it's, you know, the irresistible force versus the immovable object. And I think soccer is a little bit different from other sports because in other sports, defense wins championships. But in football, the world's game, you got to go with the better offense. You actually have to get in there and get some shots on goal. And Belgium, they're good at that. Now, it's going to be close. It might be a 1-0 victory. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Belgium to advance to the finals of the Euro. So a nice, good old-fashioned Cinderella team, making it all that far. Germany and France. Now, this game right here is actually going to be the real Euro Finals because I think it's pretty much a given whoever wins this one go over there and pretty much wallop any other team on this side of the fence unless some great calamity happens. Uh, but Germany, France, really interesting. It's going to be like a 2-1 game. Got to go with France. You know, they got the home advantage. Uh, they're just playing well. You know, referees, they get scared. FIFA, you know, there's corruption. I mean, I just don't know. I just got to go with France. I've got a feeling. Not that they're necessarily the better team, but I think just having that insane home field advantage and just everything going on in the world and the whole Brexit thing and the auger of ISIS, that Germany's going to go in there and they got their own problems too. Let's don't say that Germany doesn't have uh, some, some issues domestically. I think it's weird because you, know, you look at you know, European sports with the world we're living in now. International politics is a factor in the outcome of sporting events. I mean, that would never happen in like the Stanley Cup Finals or, you know, the World Series. But here, that political leverage is going to help France. So I got them uh, winning 2-1, uh, should be a close game. In our finals, my prediction, Belgium against France. Belgium, they're going to score some points. Thing is, France, they're going to score just a little bit more. So, uh, should be back and forth. France's goaltending a little bit better, playing a little bit better defense. Offense, pretty much even. So, in that case, the defense, the tiebreaker. With all that said, you know, it's home field advantage. You know, it usually is a huge, huge benefit in soccer. Got the better offense. That means that uh, Euro 2016, I'm going to have to give it to uh, America's oldest friend, our old BFF. Got to go with France as your 2016 Euro champions. Or as they say in uh, Gay Paris, we, 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 we going to win.